All right, so we had the example of a bat going through a constant angular motion, say about 30 degrees, and if you were standing on different points on the bat, so A1 versus A2 versus A3 versus A4, so the radius from the center of rotation to A1 is shorter than the radius from the center of rotation to A4. So as you travel a linear distance by standing on those points on the bat, if you stood at A1, you would travel a smaller linear distance than if you stood at A4, where you would travel a larger linear distance. If the bat travels through this angular motion in the same amount of time, so time is constant, if you travel a longer linear distance in the same amount of time, you go faster than if you travel a shorter linear distance. So this is showing you that if angular motion is constant, as you increase the radius, you will have an increase in linear distance and thus linear velocity. And that what's um, an example of this is um, a golf club, right? So if you increase the radius of the golf club, right, you use a wood, um, instead of a putter when you tee off, then you increase radius, you'll increase the linear velocity if you have the same angular velocity. All right, another, the opposite way to, to kind of look at this relationship, um, before we held angular motion constant, here we are saying we have two sticks, if you will, um, the longer one and the shorter one here. So one goes from B1 to B2, one goes from A1 to A2, but they all travel the same linear distance. So DA, or the, the distance from A1 to A2, is the same as the distance from B1 to B2. So you're swinging either a long bat or a short bat, but the linear distance is the same. So if linear distance is constant, um, and you increase the radius, you must decrease the angular distance. And so you can see the angle between A1 and A2, this larger angle, which is about 30, is larger than the angle from the longer bat that goes from B1 to B2. That's the smaller angle, or about half of it, or about 15 degrees. So if the distance is the same, and you increase R, then you decrease the angular motion. So that translates into velocity as well. So if linear velocity is the same, right, because they travel the same distance, if you increase r, you will decrease the angular velocity. And so you can think of that as you can't swing through the same angular motion with a longer bat than with a shorter bat. And that's kind of why Sometimes that you would suggest to smaller kids or people that can't, if the bat's too long for them, to choke up or decrease the radius of the bat so they can increase that angular motion. All right, so how does this translate into other activities? For kicking, the foot travels a long distance at a considerable speed, right? So when you kick, you flex your hip, but you extend your knee, increasing that length of that lower limb lever. Rackets, clubs, sticks, hockey sticks, increase the length of the lever and increase speed. Um, but it's not always de desirable to choose the longest lever, and we'll talk about that in a few weeks because of a concept called moment of inertia. All right, but here are some examples. So John Isner, te American tennis player, he is tall and has long levers naturally, right, his own long levers. Then you add a tennis racket, and he can get that ball, the tennis ball, at a very high linear velocity off his serve. So a big component of his tennis game is his, his very fast, powerful serve. Um, and then we can compare hockey players, right? So you a shorter hockey player with a shorter stick um, compared to a, long, a taller hockey player with a longer hockey stick. It would be easier for, for the taller player to increase the linear velocity off the, off the hockey stick. The shorter player, although he may be at a lever disadvantage, he would just need to, to focus on increasing that angular motion and angular velocity. So there are ways around this relationship, but um, you need to be aware of the relationship.